Hello and welcome back to another video, where today I'm going to show you how to make a photo look old, vintage or retro kind of style. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag in our photo. This does assume you already have GIMP installed, if you don't, go and install it, link will be in the description. You get this pop up, you press convert, and there it is. The photo to download this picture will also be in the description. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to colours, and we're going to go to curves. And this is the colour curve, it will always start off on the flat line. So we're going to drag this bottom part somewhere around here, and we're going to make it a bit darker, and close to the top we're going to drag it above the line. You can see where that dark blue line was, and where the new line is. There's no real set way of doing this, You, this is a lot of just messing around trial and error. But what you will find is like some different photos you might want to change it slightly differently, but it should end up looking like a slightly flat S. If you mess up, you can press reset and then do it again to how you like it. So there we go, and let's press OK. Next thing we're going to do is make this photo less crisp. It's quite a crisp photo that old cameras couldn't do. So we're going to go to filter, we're going to go to blur, and we're going to go to glacium blur. We're going to set it to be 8, so you can either use this slider here and mess around with that, or you can just type it. So there we go. Whatever you do to the top should do to the bottom if you have it, this link here. If you click on the link and it is broken, you can change the different sides. But we're going to link have it linked and we're going to make sure they're both set to 8. There we go. Press enter, press OK. May take a few seconds to process depending on how powerful your computer is. The next thing we're going to do is duplicate this layer. There are two ways of doing it. Make sure you first got it clicked on. You can press Ctrl Shift D, or you can press the button at the bottom. So now we should have three layers. We're going to press, click on the eye at the top one, and then we're going to click on the bottom layer. We are now going to go to our colours We're here, and we're going to make sure our top colour is a bluishy colour, and our bottom colour is a yellowy colour. And after this, we are going to go to colour, maps, and gradient map. And then we're going to give this a second. Now, as you can see, the colour looks really odd. So we're going to do a few things to it. First thing we're going to do to it is we are going to change the percentage up down to about 50%. So you can again type it and change it. When it comes, if not a bit lower, when it comes to the colours that you're going to use here, if you don't know much about colour maps or like the, the colour wheel, just use blue and yellow because I find they work quite nicely. But if you do know what you're going to use, pick a find this, your central colour and then use a, almost like the tri colours next to it. So the colours meet as all three colours will meet at a triangle. You know what sort of, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to colour and we are going to press colorize. So we're going to go to here, and we're going to go to colorize. And what we're going to do is where we have our hue settings, we're going to change this to be 16. We're going to change our saturation to be 70. Sorry, we're going to change this to be 0.16. I'm going to have this one to be 0 0.70, which will be our saturation, and our lightness we will have to be 0 0.5. There we go, and now we may want to move this down a bit more. As you can see, it won't currently look quite right. So now where we have our mode here, we're going to click on it, and we are going to change it to overlay. You may need to quickly look for this. And here it is, overlay, and there you go, it now suddenly looks a bit nicer than what it was. With this opacity setting, you can now mess around with it a bit more. Now you can actually see what the effect it has has on it. I still think for this photo, 50 might be a bit too much, so I'm going to drag it down slightly. The next thing that we are going to do is we're going to click back onto the original image here, and we're going to go to filters. 
we're going to go down to noise and we're going to do HSV noise. So there's a few different settings here that we can change and mess around with. First thing is the value. It goes up to and down by quite a lot. We're going to have our value set to 0 0.70. Like, yeah, 0 0.70. We're going to then have our saturation. And we're going to set this to 0 0.60. The hue we're going to set to the maybe up, just actually up a bit more. Nothing too much, but until you're happy with how it looks. And then the hardness or dulling, because it used to be called hardness, we're going to leave as it was. And then we're going to press OK. This may take a bit longer to load. Depending on how powerful your computer is, if you're on a laptop, you'll take a while. If you're on a fairly good computer, it'll take less time. And if you like that, you can keep it. If you don't like it, press Control Z. You can then go try and redo this. But you may end up deciding that you don't like the value beforehand. And if you give it a time while when loading in, you can sort of see a preview of what it should look like. It will take a while to load in. So you may decide what it was was too much. But this is, as well is all down to personal taste. When you find a combination that you like, you can press OK. Give it a few seconds and then it will come to the right outcome. The next few things that you can do is if you have, we can make it look like it was on paper if you want it to look like it was on a news press. So I found this piece of cracked paper. You may find ones that's like slightly darker and cracked and broken, but I am happy with this. First thing I will want to do is I'm going to press Shift T so I can scale this down so it fits to our image well enough there we go we can now go to mode and we can change this mode to grain merge once we find that grain merge there we go and we're also going to drag this to the top and you can see that if we click off click off on it and change tool so we're no longer on the scale it looks slightly cracked if you wanted to you can change down this opacity but it makes it look like it's been in a pocket if you have like paper that's been torn or slightly tea stained or like darkened you then get those effects applied to this image as well that will also help reinforce that it's old and it's been in your pocket for a while you can then mess around with other combinations so maybe at re enable this third layer at the top and then this is currently the final outcome I am happy with. This is one of those projects where you can't just say you're ha this is it done and there's lots of trial and, trial and error. You can do something more else to add which is again this one is optional which you get your rectangle tool you go in from a bit from the center and you drag out then press ok press shift die to inverse this now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to select and then we are going to click on feather. You can then increase or decrease the amount you want this feathered by. So if we try 120, okay, you can see that it slightly feathers and blurs out the sides, sides of the photos. This might not be obvious straight away. But this is something if you wanted to, you can try and do. This is, all of this is down to personal taste. With the end last part feathering your image, you don't, I wouldn't say you need to do it. But if you wanted to do it, you can and it will just sort of like blur the outside. Like the camera's not fully focused on it if there's a central object. If you're having one of these photos where it's like a wide area, it's probably not necessary. So I'm now happy with this image, so I'm going to render it out, or export it. So you can just go to File, Export As, find a place to export it, give it a name, and press Enter. Give this a few seconds, you get then this pop-up, but you can change the image, the quality, and other settings. Instead of messing around with this, just press Export, give it a few seconds, and now you're done. You then have your image, there you go that you can use. So 
Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please consider liking, subscribing, and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Bye! Bye!